Happy Whiskey Wednesday night, everybody. Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. So glad you guys are here today, tonight. Uh, we have a really packed show for you tonight. We have an exciting show coming up. I um, uh, really want to welcome everybody in. Uh, everyone gets settled in. Uh, if you are a Boston Bruins fan or a St. Louis Blues fan, uh, good luck to you guys tonight on your quest for the Stanley Cup. <laughs> uh, my, uh, you know, my team didn't even make it. The Rangers they didn't even make it in. So uh, I'm out. But you know, I'm actually kind of rooting for the Blues. Boston has won enough crap. <laughs> so uh, uh, I want to uh, let me see. I do want to welcome my guest tonight. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, if you haven't checked out their channel. I want to uh, invite Matt from Whiskey Crusaders onto the live stream. How you doing, Matt? Good. How are you doing tonight? I'm also a big New York Rangers fan, so also disappointed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what's going to happen tonight, guys? Is uh, myself and uh, and Matt. We each sent each other a huge box of samples of just a bunch of different stuff. Um, so we each opened the box. So here's the box right here. And we each picked out five samples out of the entire box that we're going to taste blind tonight, go through them. Now, the thing is, is that uh, Matt primarily has some different bourbons. And um, uh, Matt has sent me, which I think is primarily scotches. So it'll be a, kind of a fun back and forth uh, uh, type blind tasting. Um, but And also, uh, tonight I will be revealing my coin. My uh, my first uh, coin tonight, uh, my first whiskey hat coin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. And uh, at the end of the show tonight, we are giving away tonight this beautiful 1792 bottled and bond pick uh, that I helped pick out at uh, Barton. So it's going to be a really exciting show tonight, guys. We had uh, 75 entries uh, for the bottle tonight. So uh, that means one in 75 of you. <laughs> lucky participants will uh, be able to hopefully win this bottle tonight. So uh, so let's say uh, hello to people in the chat here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, we had a lot of people here early. Uh, let me say hi to Charles Asworth, Donner Pass Whiskey, Steve A, Mose Chun, Neil the Deal, the Bourbon Buddies is in the house. Go check them out, everybody. Go check out their channel. Um, we got Miguel Torres, Stellar Matrix is in the house. We got Peter White's here. Uh, cap and make it happen. Richie Z always in the chat. Love to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Dusty Dan's whiskey reviews. That is Dan, the man. He now has a cha uh, channel that he's starting up. We'll get into that a little bit later, guys, but go give uh, Dusty Dan a follow. Uh, let's see who else. Whiskey Crusaders is here. Obviously <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> Weiss. Brandon Weiss is in the house. Charles Asworth, uh, Andrew Spirell, William Davilar, Michael Hassett, Vito at Cast Strength's in the house. How you doing, Vito? Thanks for coming in, buddy. Go check out Cast Strength. Go check out Vito on his channel. Uh, they're doing some great stuff. Joseph Brazo's in the house. How you doing, man? Chad Wallace. Uh, Jay Reed is in the house. Christine Deems. Haven't seen you in a while, Christine. Thanks for coming in. Glad to see you. Bourbon Sane's here, Chris. Go check out Bourbon Sane if you haven't yet. And more and more people coming in here. Wow. Rebecca Page. What's in the box? Exactly. It's a lot of samples. Scotty from My Bourbon Journey is in the house. You guys know him. Go check out his channel. Jeffrey Wack. Oh, man. Bunch of people. Oh, we got our first uh, super chat. Rick Haskew in the house. Get this started right. Thank you so much, Rick. Obviously, Matt, talk to them a little second because I'm going to go get my symbol so I can crash it for Rick. Oh, that would help. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, Whiskey Crusaders. I don't know if you guys have ever seen us, but I also have two companions on our show. Is uh, William and Sarah. They're not here tonight because William works at night and Sarah's they got home with the kiddo. Um, but yeah, we're here. We're going to taste a bunch of cool stuff I sent to uh, Jason, and he has no idea what's in there. So it's, it's going to be fun. It's probably stuff he's never had. So that's going to be even better. So I don't think he's in any direction on this whatsoever. So which makes it even more fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of go through and see exactly what the hell you sent me because it. I, I haven't had a huge spectrum of scotches, so and I know, you know, you obviously have an intense, unbelievable collection. So uh, <laughs> uh, for Rick, I don't want to give this to Rick. This is for you, buddy. Thank you so much, man. That is for the super chat. Thanks so much. All right, let's kick this off. Um, when we get about halfway through, I'm going to reveal the coin, and then at the end, like I said, we will give away the barrel pick. So, all right. So let's go to our first selection here, Matt. 
right. But you gave me number five. I gave you letter K. So let's go with the first one. Oh, wow. It's got to be bourbon. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> yeah, it's bourbon. Super helpful, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Dremen's in the house. How you doing, buddy? I Whiskey She Wines is here. What's up, guys? Ooh, this is really sweet. I would say this is some kind of, I would I would guess, a sherried scotch. Nope. That one is not sherried. It's not sherried. Nope. They do make a sherry one. That just happens to not be one of them. Man, I'm getting a lot of lemon, a lot of honey. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's just that barley scent that I get. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's a brook that that usually smells like it's finished, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, that that classic lottie you're talking about. That thing's got all sorts of crazy stuff going. On. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, unpeated that smells like a peated. Ex yeah, exactly. That's it. Totally. Yep. Of course, it's vanilla, oak, and caramel because it's bourbon. DH Silv says, at 9.06, I get the notice you're live. Yeah, sorry. Uh, YouTube is doing some weird stuff tonight. It was hmm. saying, like, I have it I have it scheduled for 9, and then all of a sudden I look and it says, like, waiting for uh, Mash and Drum, meaning, like, I should be live already at 8.30. I'm like, what the hell's going on with this? It sounds like the chip typical Google problems we're having lately. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully when the new Hangout comes out, well, I think in October, hopefully it'll be better. I really like the nose on this. This is reminding me of a uh, of a Brook Lottie. There's a slight uh, there's a slight salty aspect to it too that I'm picking up. This just smells really sweet. Um, it's got a really nice nose. I don't know. It's probably gonna be older, is my guess. Just based on it, it's, I don't know if it's got any. I doubt it's got a finish on. It doesn't smell like a finished bourbon. It smells wonderful though. Yeah, that's that has that has a really good nose, and you'll you'll find out why later. <laughs> okay, it's like this smells really good. All right, let's go over to this first round of the night. Let's say uh, cheers, cheers to you, Matt. Thanks for coming cheers. on, and uh, cheers to everybody out there. Uh, let let us know in the chat where you're drinking along with us. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, oh, well, damn, that's yummy. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm gonna just see what you think of that. That's it's a very unique one. That is, yeah, that is. I, I'm guessing it's peated, but it's a very different peat that I've never tasted before. It's not peated either. This isn't peated either. Nope. They also make a peated one. That's just not one of them. Is it just? Is it finished in something funky? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This this tastes great though. Man, what is that flavor? That's crazy. Mm, this is really, oh, wow. That's we got, sweet. We got Old Forester 1920, Remus. Those are good. Uh, yeah, very good. We got some Blanton's people sipping on. EC, uh, Lodge Cake Brow Proof B519 by Bryson. Old Granddad 114 from Richie. Ah, oh, nice choice, buddy. You can never go wrong with the Old Granddad 114. Yeah. Mm. What the hell is that aftertaste? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't tasted that one in a while. I just not really like it. You must not really like it? No, I do really like that one. Oh, yeah. I didn't send you anything I didn't like. That would be mean. Yeah. No, I sent you a, a tour of stuff, but yeah, it's all good stuff. It's got this like sour lemon thing going on in the finish. It's, that I could see for sure. On it's, that one. it's really interesting. Like a it? like a sour lemon, uh, almost like a. I know it's going to sound weird, but it's almost like rye toast. <laughs> rye toast. Okay, I could see that happening for sure on that one, especially on the nose a little bit. But man. This is so rich. So much caramel vanilla in this. Isn't it? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. That... It's, it's got a really nice thick mouthfeel to it as well. Yep. It's really nice viscosity on there. 
Yeah, that is that is our quintessential typical bourbon, but you'll be surprised that you know at what what proof point do you think that is? I'm just curious. Um, let's see. I would guess maybe maybe mid to low 90s is my guess on this one. Cuz it doesn't it's got a little bit of spice on the end of it. The little, you know, your cinnamon and cloves. Yeah. But uh not a lot of heat though. But you know, uh, uh, probably end up being a freaking barrel proof. <laughs> this this uh this first one is tasting a little bit now like um it's got like this garden vegetable type aspect to it. That'll happen. Yeah, it's um I don't want to say it's it's not it's not like a dirt like aspect to it. It's a mm -hmm. I don't know, like it's weird. It's like fresh basil or and I'm going into my grandma's kitchen now, picking out flavors here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, grandma's good for those things. Yeah, it's 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 got like this earthy, fresh, like veg vegetable like quality to it. It's it's really interesting. I've never tasted anything like that. I really like that one a lot. I don't know what it is. You said it's unpeated, but it's got like this character that would make you think it might be peated. Yeah, and you'll find that on scotches like that particular one, you'll find that to be the case. Yeah. Of what it is. Mm, really good. I like that one a lot. Yeah, it's got some almonds on the finishes too on this one. Yeah, definitely get some more. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, like an almond butter. Yeah, this is this is delicious. Mm. Oh wow, that's yeah, just quite good. Mm. Really yeah, enjoy that. This first one's really good. Uh, I, I think it's some crazy finish on this, or crazy like a different type of uh, cask aging that I'm not used to. Yeah, like, I'm sure you're not. This is not a well-known one. Yeah, like a like a Marsala or a Madeira or something like that. Just something I'm not used to or seeing. But it's just giving off a very an earthy yet sweet type of flavor profile, especially on the finish. Uh, but you know, on the nose though, it's really really sweet, honey. Like I said, you get some kind of like a fresh, uh, you know, a vegetable aspect to it. But the finish, I don't think this is a super high proof. It doesn't feel like it is. I would say this is in the, I don't know if it's cast strength, but I would say it's, I'd say it's over a hundred at least, but it's not finishing that way at all. Nope. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys should check out the color. Look how light it is. Really, really super light. Well, it's scotch. Yeah. And if it's not aged in like a sherry cask or something like that, usually they're pretty light color just in yeah. general. Even one that's 20 years old can be pretty light in color. Just because yeah. it's scotch and just they don't ever have that barrel influence like you get in Kentucky. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a really beautiful sweetness to this. But does it? It tastes like like sweet, fresh uh, vegetables. It's crazy. Never, never had anything like that. All right. I'm gonna give I'm gonna take my notes on that one. Take some right. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, whatever this was, this was really good. Yeah, isn't that good? That one? That's really good. A lot of your classic notes, nothing crazy, but just really, really good bourbon. Whatever it is, it's quite tasty. Can't complain about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Wack wrote, uh, what are the odds uh, that I snuck you something awful? <laughs> but that is what would make it amazing. Some Basil Hayden Caribbean, maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never, dude. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even ever spend money on that thing. Uh, the basil no. Hayden rum finish. I, I've been burned the last what four times I bought a basil Hayden. They all sucked. Yeah, it's eighty proof. I think they literally just poured rum in it. They didn't like finish it in rum. Oh my god. Right. Yeah, they did the same thing with the the dark rye. They put two point five percent rum in it. I'm like, you're too lazy to even get a rum cask. And yeah, yeah. Let's just pour some you. port wine in it. Yeah, it was just terrible. No, it's just like, please stop doing these things. This is not good for your product line. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it sells or not. I, I Maybe it does. I just think it's not good at all. Hey, I Whiskey <laughs> Sue Wines comes in with the super chat. She, <laughs> that must be Sam. She wrote, Bobby spent a shiz ton at Party Source today, so I'm spending my money elsewhere. Well, thank you, Sam, for spending it on, uh, on a super chat tonight. 
Sam, you get a nice, uh, you're going to get a nice crash here. <laughs> Woo, that was a loud one. Thank you so much, Sam. Well, I saw those receipts going back and forth from the party stores. All that, all that scotch was on sale like crazy cheap. Yeah, have you, did you see it? Yeah, all of a sudden, Party Source cut all their prices on all their bottles sitting around like half to up to three quarter. I mean, it was insane the prices they were. I was like, I need somebody to go to the store for me for those prices. That's yeah, I would have taken off of work to go down there if I knew that was happening. For real, I mean, some people like Cavalons were like eight hundred bucks for you know a couple hundred dollars. I mean, just yep. stupid good prices on stuff. Yeah, they don't do sales like that around here. You get a good deal sometimes. Nothing like that, though. No, no, no. I like that. No, no. It's like, oh, yeah, $35 for this 19-year scotch. Oh, that's, yeah, horrible, terrible things happening there. <laughs> All right, let's go to number two or your second your second offering here. All right. So, yes, yeah, so you're doing number one now. One, two, okay. Oh, I love the nose on that. Wow. Ooh. Oh my word. This is this is a lot of uh fruity sweetness on the on the nose here. Yes. A ton of like fresh red berries. Mm-hmm. For sure on that one. Maybe some maybe some raisin. Or, yeah, or like a raisin or like a like a honey and a date, like honey and dates together or raisins. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense based on what that one's made. That makes me that makes me think that it's a um a mix of maybe sherry and bourbon casks. Yeah, exactly. Oh, am I right on that? It's sherry and bourbon casks? They are. Let's see. What's the casks? Yep. Sure. You are correct. Oh, see? I know something about scotch. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It's that it's that raisin date, and also there's a little bit of a nutty characteristic to it. But And there's a... Uh, I get. I usually can pick up some of those uh, those typical bourbon notes. So you get like a little bit of a caramel underneath everything. Right. Mm. Yeah, the typical you know bourbon uh, using a bourbon cast first, so that's pretty common. Yeah, it's really good. <sighs> this smells great. I love when you pick up a bourbon; it smells really good, and it's not just your typical bourbon. It's yeah, these are the ones I sent you are not typical. Uh, these aren't ones that you'll find on the shelf, uh, but. Um, also, but equally extremely delicious. Yeah, these. Oh, the second one smells awesome. Even better than the first. The first one was great. This smells even better on the nose. <laughs> oh, I'm going in for a sip of this. I can't wait. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> All right, cheers. Yeah, it's your typical same thing. You know, get your regular bourbon notes as usual, but then it's also got your your baking spices, your vanillas and caramels, mm. oak. A little bit of anise in there, so I think it's probably got some rye in this smash bill is my guess. It smells delicious. Oh, yeah, there's the oak picking up a little more oak on it. There's something a little candied on it, too. Yeah, I would I would get that. This, like, uh, this, has, this has a very intense candy sweetness on this, actually, on the finish. Ooh. But it's but it's uh it's it's almost like caramel covered like red berries like it's so fruity on the finish. Wow, mm. that's super nutty! Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's some serious nuts in that one. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the joke never gets old. It's always a good joke. Yeah. Um, Jay Reed is saying angels envy rye. I've had the Angel's Envy Rye, and that thing just smells like straight up toasted marshmallows, and that's not what this or this that's not what this taste uh, smells like. No, yeah, it's definitely not that. Yeah. Have you had the Angel's Envy Rye on the nose? That thing is straight up toasted marshmallow. It's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, that, and you get um like like uh, syrup and pancakes on that one. Yeah, totally. Yeah, syrup pancakes, toasted marshmallows. Now, have you had the Oak and Eden version of it? That's the rum cat. It's in South American oak and rum stick, rum spiral stuck in. Have you tried that one at all? No, I have not. Yeah, we had Oak and Eden here back in February, and he brought that as an experimental, and it was actually significantly better than uh, than the than the Angel's Envy version. We thought, comparing them side by side. Hey, Sunday evening scotch just uh, popped in, and he actually uh, Sunday evening scotch. He found me on Instagram, and he sent me a message. 
He said, hey, just joining in, loving your barrel pick. Yeah, he went and got a bottle, and uh -huh. he's really loving it. So uh, um, thanks, uh, thanks for picking it up, and glad you're enjoying it, man. Yeah, it's always plus when they can find. So, what store is your barrel pick at? It's at a uh, uh, liquor um, liquor outlet in um, yeah, in Shelbyville, Kentucky, or Simpsonville. I always forget which one it is. What part of Kentucky is that in? Just I, I don't know a lot about Kentucky as far as where things are located. Uh, I don't know in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle, that's that's helpful. It's about it's about twenty minutes outside of Louisville. So okay, okay, it's pretty, it's pretty close to the distillery, so it's not it's not too far. It's really nice too. Yeah, there you go, Liquor Island in Simpsonville. That that's where it was. Okay, yeah, awesome. I know the the letter B, let, uh, number one here. Uh, it also has a little bit of a. I think I I was smelling this earlier. It had like a little bit of a Texas funk to it. I'm wondering if this is some some kind of Texas single malt. <laughs> Not from Texas. Okay. All right. And then it just must be that mix of, you know, hardcore, that that really nice mix of sherry and um and a bourbon cast. It's it's correct. This is really good. Yeah, I only put good stuff in there. There's there's actually a couple different kinds of sherry in that one. Is there No, I don't I don't think it's peated. Mm -mm. No. It's not peated. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't think it's peated. Mm. Yeah, it's got both uh, Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry in it. Oh, see, the Pedro Jimenez is the one that's giving it that nutty characteristic. Anything I've ever had, Pedro Jimenez gives me like a like a nutty, like a roasted nuttiness to it, or like okay. that, that sweet, like burnt toast to it aspect to it. Mm, so good. Mm. I don't know. One was really unique, but two, two is bringing the flavor, man. I like that one. Yeah, they're gonna kind of go up in intensity as far as that flavors go. Yeah. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, this is – this must be a higher ABV on this one because this one's got a little bit more, um, you know, burn on it for sure. And yeah. It really uh, yeah. the top of your mouth especially. You're totally right on that. Yep. It's a little bit higher ABV than, uh, than the first one. Uh, Moose76 says, what is the gold label bottle behind you? Oh, this is uh, the new uh, bottle for Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit. So they basically just took the rare breed bottle and they slapped a fancy uh, gold emblem on the front. Yeah, I, I don't really like that new bottle. It's just kind of blah. Yeah, man, I'm a fan of the old turkey, uh, the turkey feather. I think it's awesome. I love the turkey feather bottle. Yep. It's one of the coolest bottles ever. I'm, when I'm done with mine, I'm using that thing as a freaking infinity bottle. Yeah. It's yep. a bottle cool as hell. I know. I want to make a lamp out of mine. <laughs> oh, I like that plan. That's an awesome yeah. plan. Yeah. It totally you, get a, you get a turkey lampshade on it and everything. Exactly. Mm. All right, guys. So before we get to the third one, I want to reveal uh, my new coin for you, for all of you. Um, so I was showing uh, Matt from Whiskey Crusaders uh, the coin uh, that, I, that I created. And... Um, uh, I'll at the end of the episode we'll get into how you guys can order one. I don't have a I don't have a store or anything yet set up for it, but um, this is uh, coin number one uh, from Drum Kit number one. So here is the coin, everybody. Mash and Drum coin. That is the front of the coin. So I could get it to kind of focus on a little bit here. There it goes. There is the coin right there. Drum Kit number one. And then on the flip side, you have my name on the back, and uh, it has a little like the top of a oh focus again has the top of a of a drum like a snare drum, and two crossed uh, drumsticks on the front, while with my info on the back. So that is my tasting coin, and then around the rim, it has my um, uh, it's the people. It's not about the whiskey; it's the people you share it with around the rim. So uh, yeah. So that is the uh, that is the new coin. Um, now the thing about the coin is, if I show you the front here again, so if you guys see it says Drum Kit One on there, so I'm going to come out with four other coins. Uh, now a typical drum set uh, has five pieces to it. You have a snare drum, a bass drum, and you have three toms. 
So with this, uh, this is drum kit one. I'm going to be releasing um, four more coins after this to complete the drum kit. So basically, everyone can collect all, all, uh, all five in the first drum kit to complete the full drum set. Um, and I'll, I'll do a different design on each one. But this is going to be the first one in the drum kit. So uh, details on how to order these coming up soon. So I hope you guys like them. I think they came out really cool. Yeah, I think they're awesome. Those are really cool. I like the concept of having five different ones right off the bat. That's a yeah. really cool idea. Looks good. How yeah. long did it take you to design that thing? What's that? How long did it take you to design it? Uh, a couple of weeks till I was happy. I'm a little bit picky with my stuff that I create, so it took me a while. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised on that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, Bourbon, I'm getting them all. Uh, being a drummer, that is sweet as hell. Oh, thanks, Bourbon Buddy. Yeah, Neil's a drummer as well uh, from Bourbon Buddy. So awesome. Yeah, man, complete the kit. Uh, all right, let's get into number three, man. Here we go. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh. This has got like a heavy toast on it. It smells like. God, what is that smell that's on this uh, this whiskey? Okay. I don't know if this is sherry, but I'm getting some kind of a some kind of a wine finish on three. Is sherry. three? Sherry's correct. What's that? Sherry is correct. Sherry's correct. Yeah. This seems like a deeper, uh, darker nose on it than the first two. Yeah, so does uh, so does the number three here. <laughs> That's funny. This one, uh, this one just seems richer uh, and more um, more vibrant. Absolutely, man. No I'm getting, doubt on that. I'm getting strawberry in here. Toast. Getting total like rich caramel. A lot. I'm getting an almond, like a like a rich like a marzipan flavor in here. Okay. Yeah. Caramels, brown sugars. The nose on this one is incredible. Yeah, that one definitely is. That's that's one of actually one of my favorite scotches of all time. So yeah, this has got like buttered toast. Got some uh it's like a basil note on it. And some uh, breadcrumbs. A little bit of cinnamon, some nutmeg. Not a lot of oak from Fluence. It doesn't seem there's any rye in this one. The nose is not as intense as the other two. So I'm thinking just nose-wise, AVB doesn't seem as strong. Yeah, this one, um, the ABV doesn't seem as strong to that one. That's interesting that you say that. Not on the nose. I haven't tasted it yet, but not on yeah. the nose. The other two seem to be a little bit stronger, but we'll probably taste it. I'm sure it'll probably <laughs> dramatically change that. Yeah, again, on this one, I'm getting a really rich raisin date um, type flavor on the nose here. I can't wait to try this. I'm going in, buddy. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That one's way higher APV. <laughs> Never mind. The note, it's funny. The nose doesn't have it, but holy crap on the taste. Exactly. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing when I tried that one. Yep. I was not ready for that. That was unexpected. Uh, I want to say hi, open up your I want to say hi to uh, New Manium who came in. Thanks for coming in, New Manium. Nice to see you, buddy. Woo. Excellent. All right. Again, the finish on this, it's one of those scotches where I've never experienced a finish like this. It's extremely unique. There's a, again, this also has some kind of a, like a veg vegetable type finish aspect to it, but that's really kind of, it's very quick. And then all of a sudden you get this, these really nice, rich, sweet flavors, almost like a plum. Yes, for sure. A lot of plums, a lot of rich, deep, dark uh, red fruits here. Man, mm. that's really that's really intense on the finish. Extremely mouth coating. Number three is 
definitely some rich plums, but you still get that underlying, that really nice, um, you know, you get some like really sweet barley notes here. Some of that burnt toast flavor. A little, I'm still getting a little bit of that that almond or that marzipan on the on the finish too. But it's really just all super like plums and and rich uh, and rich dark red fruits. That's really really good. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's one of my absolute favorites of all time. So I'm glad you enjoy that one. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. Hey, so, Robert, really Robert, Robert, Robert Licorice is in the house from Iron Root. How you doing, Robert? Thanks for coming in tonight. Hey, Robert. How's it going? We have 81 in the chat. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks oh. for coming in, guys. Uh, man, this is really rich. Um, I think it's a little bit thicker on the mouthfeel on this one. But, it's got, yeah, it still has got a little bit of nuttiness. And like I said, your oak, your vanilla's caramels. Yeah. Uh, just for, for you guys, for you guys that are just joining in, um, I want to call it what we're doing here. Uh, Matt and I swapped a bunch of samples. I sent him some stuff from my collection. He sent me stuff from his collection. Uh, basically, I sent him a bunch of different uh, types of bourbons, and he sent me a bunch of amazing scotches. So we're trying to we're, we're going back and forth and see what we pick out and uh, see we're gonna have a nice reveal at the end. So. <sighs> Oh, this has got like a like an almond cookie on it. Oh, Ooh, that's oh, really yeah. unique. Absolutely. Oh yeah, mm, that's really good. Yeah, isn't that good? These just keep getting better and better. Yeah, got definitely it. a high. I would assume this is well over a hundred. Yeah, I would. My guess. Yeah, I think you're. You're. I think like you're pretty spot on with that one. Yeah. Um, this one. This is one of those ones that I don't think is that that high of a proof, but it's got a finish on it that might trick you to think it is a higher proof. <laughs> it's It's got this lingering uh, finish on it. I don't know if that just has to do with the aging, if it's an older, um, I'm guessing this is a little bit on the older side because the flavors in here are so rich and they're so robust. Correct. You just, I mean, you get all sorts of flavors here. Every time I take a sip, I'm getting something different out of it. Now I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit more citrus to go with that that red fruit and uh, like a deep, rich, like honey character. That is really good. Yeah. yeah. Charles this Adler, got so much. Say again, Matt. So this got so much toast on it. Yeah. It's just it's like this on, on the nose, it's more butter. This on the taste, it's more like a dry toast. But it's really good. Yeah, isn't that good? Ooh. That's really good. This could hurt you really badly, though. I know. That's that's one of those ones that when I tell you the proof of it, when we find out, you'll see it's the um, – I'll tell you the proof, and it it sure doesn't drink like the proof, so. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm. Mm. This, is, this, uh, this third scotch is really good. Yes, absolutely. All right. I'm taking my notes here. I'm going to have some water here. What are you guys saying in the chat? Uh – Sounds like Peter, the other night. Peter White saying, hmm, sounds like a Glen going 21. Hmm, that's funny. <laughs> Matt didn't it's even not say the Glen going 21. That's funny. But 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 uh close. Oh, all right. He's saying close. Maybe maybe you're close in the years, Peter. Maybe I, I'm not surprised that Peter White got that because I know how much he likes stuff like this, so I'm not surprised based <laughs> on his uh response yeah yeah i mean uh and actually um joseph brazo makes a good point that most scotches don't go high proof like bourbons do um true yeah it, so it, it, it's hard to find um a scotch that's barrel proof unless you get independent bottlers yeah those you'll find cast strength okay i think tomatin has got a cast strength one that's an actual theirs, but the direct, mass mass majority don't make cast strength for whatever reason. So you know, whatever works. Thank God for independent bottlers in Scotland that do give us cast strength. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, but you know what? I really do enjoy that that kind of you know. I, I you know I've, I've talked to you about how much I love uh, kind of a Bunahaven fanboy. That forty six point three percent ABV. It's a really nice proof point. I feel like I could taste the scotch and also get 
a nice finish on it as well, you know? Sixty, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So Steve A says he's got three balls over sixty ABV as far as Scotch goes from SO from Scotch Malt Whiskey oh, Society. Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll do it. He should for them. They make great stuff though. That's for sure. Oh, and Peter White says most of his Scotch is cast strength. So also not a surprise. <laughs> most of my Scotch is cast strength. Yeah. I mean, the few cast strength Scotches I've had have either been samples. I have actually uh, Jason Coates. I don't know if he's. Yeah, he's in the chat. He sent me a he sent me a couple of uh, samples that were that were cast strength, and I could see why people mm -hmm. would really love those cast strength scotches. I'm a big fan of the Abelor Abonad. I think that's a great scotch. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, so like the Lagavulin 12. That yeah, that's fantastic. Lagavulin 12 is fantastic. Um, oh, even sorry. Lagavulin 8 is is a is a little bit higher than your typical scotch. That one's delicious. Definitely yeah. a good one. All right, I'm going into number. three. Number four, four here, all right. So which is uh, which is the darkest out of all of them. So um, I can't wait to smell this one. Here we go. You're on. You're on to number four. Is right. Uh, let me check what yeah. number four is here for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. This one should throw you a little bit off. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, what the hell? <laughs> okay, that's really unique. That's. That's got to be a higher ABV because at least the alcohol forward on this on the nose is pretty high. That's unique nose. What is that? Oh my I think god! It has more your your woodsy notes to it on the nose. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually a good call out. Yep. This is um this is this is honey cooked figs in the oven. Honey cooked figs. Like okay. you, ever, you ever drizzle figs with honey and cook them in the oven? Yeah, that sounds fantastic right now. We should, we should <laughs> that. Yeah, that's what I'm getting in this class. Oh my god. Oh yeah, this I is like I'm, the woods when it rains. Yeah, but I'm getting I'm definitely getting some a little bit some more of the uh, those typical I'm getting some uh, some bourbon notes. I'm guessing this is a mix of of uh finishes again. Correct. It is okay. So this is a mix of bourbon and sherry or some kind of mix of casks. Yeah, because this is, let's see. Sure. Okay. That's why that makes sense. Wow. Yeah, that's also a unbelievably good. It, I mean, this has everything I love in a good scotch, especially on the nose. It's got a nuttiness characteristic to it. It's full of rich, dark red fruits. But the, I'm getting like, um, again, I'm going back to my grandma's kitchen. She used to, you know, pull fresh figs and then put honey on them and then and then roast them in the oven. And then when they came out, it was just delicious. But it's also got like this. It's also almost got like this concentrated, almost like a red wine characteristic to it as well. I know it's mostly the sherry, but mm -hmm. there is like this deep, rich, like grape note to it almost. So good. Okay. Joseph Braso said, "Oh, burnt band aid No, Joseph, it's not burnt band aids. It's not no. peated. Yeah, that's definitely not remotely peated. Yeah, yet. this is not even close to being peated. So it's definitely not peated. Yeah, so this has your cloves and your cinnamon vanillas. But yeah, it's like you're cooking in the woods. It's also got. It's got a lot of cloves, actually." Yeah. Uh, Patrick Flynn has asked me, how does it compare to bourbon? Um, see, for me now, as a, as a primarily a bourbon drinker, um, I don't, the pure sherry scotches, as much as some of them are really good, you know, I find them mostly to be, I don't know, to me, they're, they're good, but they're less interesting than, than the, than the mix of uh, when you do a bourbon and a, and a sherry cast together or the peated scotches. And I know it's hard for people to kind of believe that because, you know, you, th you think, oh, that burnt Band-Aid smell. But the thing that I found in peated scotches is there, there's a ton of sweetness behind the peat. Just when you, if you get past that smell and kind of get past that flavor profile, the um, there's a, a ton of sweetness in peated scotches. And that's what kind of blows my mind about it. Uh, when it comes to scotches that I like that I could equate to a bourbon, um, 
you have exclusive X bourbon uh, uh, scotches. And those are probably, those are kind of my gateways to get into scotches, like the Glenfiddich 14, which is primarily X bourbon, uh, Old Pulteney uh, 12, which has a lot of like uh, toasted caramel notes in there. That, that was kind of a gateway into some scotches as well. But for me, the more interesting ones happen to be the ones that are mixed with sherry and ex bourbon. Um, you could equate it to almost, you could kind of equate it to like a finished bourbon type aspect, one that has a little bit more of a fruity aspect, but you're still getting those bourbon notes in it. Yeah, when, when I try to go to convert over to scotch, I always use the Glenfiddich 14 year bourbon yeah. barrel reserve and then the Glen Ross bourbon barrel. Those are the two that work the best for converting bourbon drinkers to scotch drinkers by far. Yeah. And then, and then like you said, it's funny, like how Bunahaven and, and Old Pulteney work really well because they're from different regions and, you know, the peat level is like three, I think, in the, on the uh, Bunahaven. So, but yeah, they're both really good introductions. And then you can just work your way up into the different finishes and we're going to work a lot of people into peat eventually, which is even cooler. Yeah. I've given three people uh, uh, a couple. I mean, I don't have a huge Scots collection. I have, I have a good amount of stuff that I've gotten into, but uh, anybody that ever wants to try a Scotch that's a bourbon lover, actually, I automatically give them the Bunahaven 12 and see what they think. And they're normally pretty impressed with it. Um, so, uh, and probably the old Pulteney, I'd give them before that because of that salted caramel taste to it that people. Right. Really like. So now have you ever had the 17 or the 21 of the old Pulteney? I have the 17. Yeah. yeah. The 17, okay. Yeah. I have the 17. That's a wonderful, wonderful whiskey. Uh, Sunday evening scotch actually also call that another one. That I forgot about it. Uh, the Balvenie 12, uh, single barrel first fill. Excellent. Scotch. That's, that's an excellent scotch and also a great. Uh, gateway scotch for bourbon drinkers because you're getting very intense um, uh, bourbon characteristics in that scotch. There's some deep, uh, rich caramel vanillas that you're getting. Those typical notes that you're that you're used to. A good finish. Um, that's also a really good one. And the price is good in that one too. Yeah, that one's like 70, 80 bucks here for that one. It's more yeah. expensive, but you know it's a good scotch. Hey, Scotch yeah. Comic is in the house. How you doing? Thanks for coming in. But yeah, on this one, now I'm picking a bunch of floral and doughy and pine needles and peanut butter up off this one. Oh, this peanut butter. Most complex one I think I've sm that I've known so far. The what one? Most complex, I think, yeah. of all of them so far. Yeah, I would I would get that, yep. Uh, Steve A says, does that one taste like fruit cake in a glass, number four? I'm going to take a sip right now. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Oh. Actually, Steve A, yes. <laughs> it does taste like fruitcake in a glass. <laughs> wow. So that one has a high ABV. And that one is also extremely, extremely, um, man, that has the most intense mouthfeel out of all of them. That one is painting yeah. inside of my palate. Mm. Hey, Bourbon Junkies came in with a super chat. I'll have to try the Glenfiddich. Being a Scotch beginner, I really like the Glen Farkless 12. Also a good call out. Definitely. Without any 14 rum. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. If that's Dan, I know he has a sweet tooth, so I see why he would like the rum. Uh, thanks so much, guys. If none of you have had uh, or checked out Bourbon Junkies yet, go check them out. Dan, this is for you, buddy. <laughs> thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Number four is incredibly intense. This is so good. There we go. Mm. Weird. Yeah, that's definitely probably the thickest mouthfeel of the ones you've got in the box of those five. Yeah, it is it is creamy. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, if, this, if, you, if you could like take a like a carrot cake with all those spices and the one, you know, the carrot cake with the raisins in it. Oh, those are good. Mm. All those, yeah, all those spices, and you could like whip it up into liquid. That's what's in this glass. <laughs> There's a there's a nutmeg and a cinnamon aspect to it, but very fruity, very creamy. Yeah, it, it's definitely a dessert scotch for sure. That is, yeah, that is intensely fruity and man, the mouthfeel on that is incredible. Uh, scotch comic says thoughts on Belmead. Scotch comic, I love Belmead. Actually, uh, to bring up Belmead, uh, thanks, Scotch comic. <laughs> I uh, just interviewed this morning. Uh, I interviewed uh, Andy and Charlie Nelson from Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery. Uh, we did a recording uh, interview, um, recorded interview. 
Uh, so yeah, we got into different Bell Mead, the future for Greenbrier, what they're working on next. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to see it. Uh, that should, I should post that interview. It really depends on when, uh, how fast they get back to me with approval, but yeah, it was a great interview and, uh, you'll guys get to learn a little bit more about Bell Mead, where they're going, how they came up with some of their crazy finished uh, bourbons, the honey, the, uh, the black bell, all the, all those different ones. So that's going to be coming up soon, guys. This is unique. I don't know what this is. I've never tasted a bourbon like this. This is really something else. Isn't it crazy? It just keeps changing. Going, what the hell is this? Yeah, it goes from um, it goes from like rye, like like when I first tried that, I thought it was a rye whiskey. Mm -hmm. And then as you taste it, it starts, and then as it opens up, all these deep, rich, you know, bourbon flavors start coming out. It's yeah, all of it's super rich. It's like the. Uh, the caramel on the bottom of a Starbucks cup. <laughs> oh, that's a really good call out. Oh, that's that's it's but it's like it's super intense though. I imagine the ABV on this one's also fairly high. This has an intense brown sugar. You ever have a um you ever have one of those like rum cakes where where they like they squeeze rum on the cake and then the rum like kind of gets to the bottom and it's like syrup on uh, the bottom of the cake? Yeah, that's good. That, that's what I'm getting in this glass. Okay. Like that. I don't. It doesn't taste like rum, but it has this intense, like brown, sugary note. That's very. Like, it's like rum tastic, man. So yeah, no doubt that, yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah, that thing is really thick. Yeah, it's really rich. My goodness. Wow, this is just delicious. I I have no idea what the heck this is. <laughs> this this is. Damn, this is good. Whatever it is, it is really, really good. Isn't that good? I really I, like it. I think we both have ringers on our fourth dram here. I don't know. Apparently, whatever this is, this is awesome. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right, let's go to uh, the last dram of the night here. Okay. I'm really I'm really excited you for you to taste the last one. So. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going into the last one here. See what we have here. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> Captain Make It Happen said, Stop talking about desserts. I'm getting phantom calories over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Every, everyone's just getting fatter as I'm talking. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching uh, Tommy Boy the other night. Tommy Boy was on, one of my favorite movies of all time, and in the car. He's, he's, he's watching me. He's like, I can actually hear you getting fatter. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Boy is just a great movie. Oh, Richard. <laughs> Sinner. <laughs> <laughs> I could quote that movie all day. I love it. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, Captain would know. Captain's been here several times to my house. So. Oh, has he? He's yeah. a, I love John's a good dude, man. Yeah, he sure is. Okay, so this is interesting. Okay, yeah, this one now this one has kind of changed gears here on the fifth one here. Yeah, this one is not like the others. Yeah, yeah. This one went totally off the rails. Yeah, that's why it's last. This has an intense barley character. Okay. I am getting some serious like burnt toast, honey. There's a floral quality to it that's like punching me in the face. Yeah, that'll do, that one will definitely punch you in the face. There's no doubt about it. Ooh. See, this one I, I'm getting a lot of desserty notes on it compared to the other ones. Yep, yep, can see that. It's like it's like cake, but an unfrosted cake. But it's also got the cinnamons, and vanilla, and caramel, and oak. But it's much uh, darker, I would say. Uh, Richie Z is asking, did you get the Old Bones 10-year bourbon yet? Uh, I have not. I haven't even seen it. I mean, I've seen pictures of it, Richie, but I, I don't. I haven't seen it in a store to, to get it. Not at all. I have the 11. It's really tasty. You have the 11 of the Old Bones? No, I don't. They don't sell that here in Ohio. The only reason I have it is uh, I had a guy come to one of our events, and he gave us a bottle, which was awesome of him. So <laughs> really good. Yeah, I heard good things about it. Man, this is just um, – uh, 
I mean, this has a very light color to it, but you're going to be surprised on that one. I am getting, I, I would guess that this is, oh man, I can't, this one is all over the place, the nose. Every time I go back in, I'm still getting all those, those rich honey burnt toast, that really nice yeah. French barley character. There's some vanillas in here, which is making me think it's, it's bourbon, uh, bourbon cask, uh, aged, but there's a heavy sweetness in here too, which is making me think it's sherry. So it's kind of, it's all over the place. I don't remember. Let me look real quick. I don't think it has a sherry cast, but it's. I, if I had to guess, I would say it's not sherry. I think it's bourbon. Or it, yeah, it's going to be bourbon for sure. Okay. It's unique. All right. I'm going for a, a taste of this one. Cheers, buddy. To the last, to the Cheers. last tram. Cheers. Yeah, I got like fondant icing on this one on the nose still. Ah, oh, it smells good. Mmm. That's that's Ooh. really good. Ooh. That one has a little bit of like a, a a wine finish to it. Very sweet on the it it didn't it didn't smell that sweet on the nose, but it's finishing very sweet. Mm hmm mm. If I had to guess, I would say that's something from Campbelltown. You're right. It just has that Campbelltown funk to it. Springbank, mm -hmm. Springbank, Long Row. If mm -hmm. I could take a stab in the dark, it'd be one of those. Mm. Good job on that. Yeah, this has got like um, some cocoa on it. This is yeah, very. This is also kind of desserty. Did you take a sip of that one yet? Yeah, I just did. It's really nice. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that's a Campbelltown, some kind of Springbank uh, or Long Row. That's really good. Mm. Yeah, this is uh, – got some raisins in it too. It's like a, almost like um, oatmeal raisin cookies. Oh, it's yeah. Good. I can see that. Mm. There's, a, there's a specific finish on that one though that, that it kind of gives off. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the bourbon buddy says, don't want to throw off your tasting, but Richard, who's your favorite little rascal, Alfalfa, or is it Spanky Sinner? <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have to kind of say like he says it. He's like, hey, Richard, <laughs> who's your favorite little rascal, Alfalfa, or is it Spanky? <laughs> the way he says it, man. Oh, my God. I love that movie. Oh, that's too funny. Mm. I would say that's a that's a that's either I'm gonna guess that's some kind of a, a long row, but it's but it's finished. It's it's a finish I've never had. Maybe it's a white wine finish or a or a um some kind of a wine finish or maybe a spring bank that's a wine finish. It's just finishing like a, like this really nice um almost like a wine oaky note to it, like a Chardonnay or a okay. or a Pinot or something like that. That's really good. Yeah. So Excellent one. Mm. Totally oh, different than the other four, though. What's that? Oh, it's completely different. Completely. I have a hard time picking out of any of these. So, um, yeah, this is a super sweet finish on it. Whatever it's finished in, mm -hmm. it's super sweet. And it's really tasty. Yeah. Mm, that's it's good. not good. It's really oh. one of the most unique. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the most unique bourbons I've had uh, oh. in a long time. And it's really oily. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like completely mouth coating oily, almost the oiliness of like a Lafroig, except for not no peat, obviously. <laughs> uh, Richie Z said eighty nine people watching, nice crowd. Yeah, got eighty nine in the chat. Awesome. Um, went over ninety at one point. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it. Mm. Wow. Uh, Scotch comic. He's he's giving me a challenge. Best easy to get bourbon under thirty dollars, other than Wild Turkey one hundred and one. Easy to get. Uh, under thirty bucks. Uh, is old grind ad one one four under thirty? Yeah, it's twenty five dollars. Yeah, old grind ad one one four. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So, yep, great minds think alike. Yep, that's what I would say, hands down. I mean, it's it's spicy as hell, 
Mm -hmm. but it's awesome. You get that's that's a big punch of flavor for your money right there. Gotta yep. love old grand at one one four. And I know Richie Z in the chat. He was uh, he was uh, he was sipping on it too. So even um, even old granddad one hundred, even old granddad bonded. Heck yeah! I mean, it's a gym it's a Jim Bean product too, but it's a damn good bourbon for under thirty bucks. Oh damn! Hell, we can get that one here for ten bucks sometimes. What? Yeah, it's crazy cheap. Damn, that's awesome, man. It's yeah, I was like ten dollars. Hell yes, bottle of bond. <laughs> you can't beat that. Yeah, one other one I want to throw out there too is Evan Williams bottled and bond the white label. Okay, I don't know how. I mean, I I see it all around here, but I go to other states and don't see it at all. So I'm not really sure what the distribution of it is. It, uh, but it's a it's a bottled and bond hundred proof Evan Williams. Um, it's got a nutty characteristic. It, it's it's Heaven Hill. It's probably the closest thing I found. It tastes somewhat like the Heaven Hill bottled and bond that we all know and love and had said. Yeah, you know, said goodbye yeah, to the white label. Yeah, yeah, the white label. Yeah, most unfortunate. Yeah, we get the we get the Evan Williams, but we also get the single barrel for twenty five bucks. So I go with the single barrel over the uh, bottle and bond personally. The Evan Williams. Yes. See, I like the bottle and bond over the single barrel. The single barrel to me, the Evan Williams single barrel has been a little bit flat lately. Hmm. Um, for me, that Evan Williams bottle and bond is consistent and delicious. So dessert. Yeah, every one of these has been good and completely different than the, than each other. There's none of these are remotely alike. Yeah. Well, that was the point. Yeah, none of these are really. If I had to pick two that were alike in here, yeah, I mean, number four seemed like a more intense version of number three. Okay. Number five here, the first one was completely a unicorn. That one tastes oh, like yeah. nothing else. Um. Number uh, number two here was really different, and obviously, the Campbelltown one was uh, kind of completely off the rails here. So completely, Absolutely. yeah, completely. So all right, so how did I do tasting wise? Pretty damn good though. Actually, I'm pretty impressed considering that I'm sure you've had zero of these except for like you said, maybe the Campbelltown. The rest of the no, you did pretty damn good. I was pretty impressed because all things considered. Okay, and you also called out some flavors, uh, some very unique flavors. That I didn't think about, but I could see why you picked it up. But you also picked out some really um, some flavors that were spot on. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, YouTube whiskey tube high five. Good job, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> All right, let's do the reveals, and then after that, we're gonna give away uh, this uh, this seventeen ninety two bottle tonight. So, um, uh, let's uh, let's why don't you uh, why don't you rank yours first? All and right, then, and then we'll go through the reveal here. Let's see. I would rank. Hey, the Bourbon Road's in the house. How you doing, Jim? Go check out the Bourbon Road, the podcast. If you guys haven't yet already, uh, me, Scott, and Dusty Dan will be on um, on the on one of the episodes, the upcoming episode. So should be uh, go go uh, check them out and listen in, guys. So I'm going to rank these real quick. Uh, all right. I'm going to say okay. That was. Let me go here. Let me scooch this over. I'm going to say that's two. Um, I got to choose between these two. Yeah. The order is kind of like – they're minuscule differences as far as I'm concerned. They're all so, so good. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty I – kind of, I kind of moved around a couple of them here, but I think I have my order. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, I'm ready. Okay, so the first thing I picked. So you want to? So you want to so work backwards here? What? What was? Uh, Do that. Yeah, we'll work backwards. Okay, that works. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, everybody in the chat, uh, get ready. We're going to do the reveal. So we're going to go with our number five pick. And um, I'll. Uh, you're the guest, so you go first, buddy. What was your number five pick? L. Whatever L was. L. Okay, so L was. Let me open the box here. All right. L was the Wild Turkey 13 year uh, Distillers Reserve, which is an import. That's from Japan, right? So that one comes from usually. That is from Japan, correct? Oh, I've never. I wanted to try that one, so that makes it's even better. Yeah, isn't that cool? So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. This one, uh, this one. This one to me is, you know, when I first got it, when I first sipped it, it was really good. Mm -hmm. But um. Excuse me. It was really good, but I don't know. I expected a little bit more out of it, but I thought it had one of the more unique 
wild turkey flavor profiles I've ever tasted. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't taste like turkey at all. It's very – yeah, it's quite a bit different. Especially, yeah. I, think was, I don't know if there's – and it's the same mash bill as the rest of the turkeys? Or is there any different just years or – so yeah. know, it's 13 years old. It's just, uh, you know, this, this was aged, you know, a while back. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it was aged. Okay. I found some more info on it from uh, rare bird one one So he's like the freaking wild turkey God. Oh, he's amazing. That dude could like pick out different Rick houses. It's amazing. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. 13, 13 has a little bit more of a, um, doesn't have that typical kind of rye -ish note that you get with a wild turkey. It's a little bit more fruit forward. So I, I really like it. Yeah, that's good. Like I said, there's nothing bad in here at all. It's just yeah. All right, so number five for me was actually the first one you gave me, which was number five. So okay. So what was that one? That was one which I think you've never had. That is oh crap. Out of the, is Wolfburn Northland? It's a five-year Scotch that only been in business for a few years. Wow. Um, but they used to be a distiller in the 1800s. And they went out of business, and they brought them back a few years ago. So it's this cool uh, creature that's like half wolf, and it comes through the you know the dark of the night and the fog, and you can meet it. It's good luck supposedly. So <laughs> yeah, I I think it's a it's it's forty six percent, and I think it's a really nice scotch for a for a five year. I'm very impressed from what it is. This is only five years old. Only five years old. There's a ton of flavor in here for five years. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. So what you're, 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 you're asked with the peat and the sherry. They also make a sherry and peated version as well. What is this? What is this particular one aged in? This is just a bourbon cask. This is just bourbon. Yeah. Now here's the thing. They're the most northern distillery on the mainland of Scotland, so they're right on and they're right on the ocean. So I think that's why you get so many unique flavors in it because of the location of the distillery. Yeah, I said in the beginning, I'm getting like this salty note to it, like a maritime, and that that's got to be it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It has to be it. But yeah, I'm very, and they're only like 50 bucks too. So I think it's a very, very good scotch for five years. That's all. I'm going to be on the lookout for that one. So yeah, if you can find it, definitely pick that one up. All right. Thanks, man. That's, that's a really good pick. I got to check out. I, I know a couple of uh, YouTubers that are really into Wolfburn. So that's cool. No, awesome. All right. What was your number four? Uh, that will be A. A. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Ready? This was uh, Bell Mead Select Cask uh, Cognac Finish. Interesting. So this comes in at 116.5 proof. Okay, not surprised. Look, I, I guess 115, so I was pretty damn close. You were, you were spot on with that. But this is finished in Cognac Cask, and it's a, uh, it's a, a select store pick from uh, Martin's okay. Wine Cellar. Yeah. That's cool. I'll have to compare that later to my regular cognac. See how that one is compared to it. So that's kind of cool. This one, this one was one of the more unique cognac casts that I've tasted coming out of Bell Mead. And it's uh I thought it was a really unique flavor profile. It was really good. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so that was A. Hey Amy, uh Amy W's in the house. How are you how you doing, Amy? Thanks for coming in. Hey, Amy. Yeah, she she's in a lot of the awesome chats too. She's quite good at staying in most of them as well. Yes, she is. <laughs> All right. So what do you got for uh Europe? Uh, oh yeah. So my was uh my fourth place was number one. Number one. Okay. These are pretty much exactly how I figured you'd pick them. All right. So this is a lowland. This is Akintoshan three wood. Oh and so wow. it's it's the first it's in three different casks and it is North American oak, and then it is also Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso as well. Yeah, you can definitely taste the mix of casks in here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really nice color on it. I mean, this is a really nice scotch. Yeah, that's dark. It's dark, but yeah, since those since those cherry cask finishes on it. But yeah, this is my favorite Akintoshan. They also make, uh, see, five, I've got four other different ones as well, but this is the most unique they make, so that's why I sent you this one. How uh, how old is that one? It has no age statement. Um, they make a twelve and an eighteen. But this one has no age, so I'm not really sure. I'm, I would guess probably eight would be my guess, but I don't know that for sure. But Jay, based on experience, that's my guess. Wow, well, damn good stuff, though. That's really good. I've, I've, you know, I could get that where I am. Actually, they have that in Ohio, the Arkansas. Oh, it's actually one of the harder ones to get because for a while it was damn near impossible, and then finally we started getting cases back in. Yeah, Bourbon Buddies, that's one of his favorites, so good reason. Yeah. Really good. All right. 
Let's go into your uh, so your third place. What did you have in third? K. 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 Oh, you ready for this one? <laughs> All right. This is an old granddad from 1982. Holy crap! That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? That is so oh, that's a dude side by side with those for sure. <laughs> what's the ABV on that? So they so this is only 86 proof. Really? Right, but it drinks hotter, doesn't it? Way hotter than that. Yeah. So the older stuff, they really? come in and they, they sip a little bit hotter, but flavor profile. Uh just an incredible bottle. Uh I got this as a as a gift. Uh somebody somebody's grandfather had it and kind of he actually took a swig of it and then just gave me the rest. He's like, you could have it. I don't like it. So perfect. <laughs> I was thank like, you. I will take that. Thank you. So um, Absolutely. yeah, that's awesome. This is, this is from 1982. 1982. So, wow. Crap. That's the year after I was born. Uh, Whiskey Ace, hold that up to the camera. All right. Here you go, guy. There you go. That is the old granddad from 1982. It's got the old tax stamp, the old gold foil label on top. Um, it's a, it's a delicious bourbon. It's just a, uh, it's got that old dusty character to it. It's got intense butterscotch, but in that still that, that old granddad, you know, uh, spirit, it still has like that nice rye kick at the end. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, uh, let's go into my number three, which was number bottle number two, which is my third place. Bottle number two. Okay. All right, so bottle number two. This is this one here, which is oh, going, going 18 year. That's the 18? 18. I've actually had that one. That's even funnier. I had a I had a you know one of the little taster bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I really liked the 18. That was wow. Really good. Somebody in the chat, didn't somebody say Glenn Goyne? Was that Peter White? Yeah, that was Peter White. I was like, I, I'm not surprised he got that one. Yeah, Peter White, I think, said 18. That's right. Yeah, really so I think he called the 21. I was like, man, that's that's crazy. He's able to pick that up. Yeah, that 21 is magical. Though. Have you had the 21 ever? I haven't had the 21. I'll bring you a sample of it in October then. The, the 25, I heard, is insane too. That's what I've heard, but I haven't tried it. Yeah. Brad just likes to taunt me with it from Canada. Yeah, uh, Peter White called it, but missed the age. Yeah, I think he did. I think he said it was older, but he said twenty-one. So hey, yeah. three years off is not bad. Yeah, the when I had, I did a, I did a, uh, I did a live stream, and I did the um, the twelve, the fifteen, and the eighteen together. And uh, the eighteen, I actually preferred the fifteen a little over the eighteen because I felt like the fifteen had a uh, like a spikier finish on it. But I could see with the extra three years, it gets a little bit more refined, a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. See, I like the ten better than the twelve as well. I, I go through a lot more ten than I do twelve. Yeah. The Glen Goyne. The cast strength is also fantastic. They make. But the best. Oh, yeah. I. Yeah. Is, I, is the uh, teapot dram. Oh, I am. That is the one freaking scotch I want to try so bad. <laughs> yeah, I had a guy come last year at Christmas. Our, we had a small group of us get together for Christmas and. He brought it for the Christmas party of, of whiskeys, and that was – everybody brought their best stuff, and he brought one of those. It's like – that was mind-blowing good how good that thing is. Yeah, I've heard that the uh, Sunday Evening Scotch made a good point. Maybe you can give me some – well, you said you never had the 25. They said the 25 is amazing, but the 21 is actually not that far off. And for <laughs> like a savings of like a hundred over 100 bucks, you can get the yeah. 21 and not be too bad. Yeah, because you can get the 21 here for $144. Yeah. But oh, the, wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but the 25 is like – Damn near five hundred. So that's uh, wow, interesting to know. Oh, good. Uh, Robert says he has a sample for me. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, man. Bring those samples, Betty. There we go. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, so you're up. What is your number two? H. H. So H was this one, which is a Kentucky exclusive. It's the Four Gate Whiskey Sweet. Company. I'm excited because I wanted to try. I was like, "There's no way I'd ever get it, though." That's fantastic. This is a uh, this is uh, this is the first batch of uh, a new company, and these guys basically what they're doing is they are sourcing, but they are finding really unique casks to finish their uh, bourbons in. So, so what's, what's it finished in? So this is 11 years old, and it's finished in sherry rum casks, 
Oh. Uh, that held. I'm sorry. So if this is an Ol Oloroso sherry uh, cask that held rum for I think six or seven months. Oh. Then, they, then they poured the rum out and then they aged the bourbon in it. Interesting. Yep. That's very different. What's the proof on that one? This one comes in at a as a at a hefty 123.4. Okay, that I'm not surprised on. It's hot, yeah. hotter than I expected. When I first when I first opened it, it smelled like a uh, stag to me, George T. Stag. But hmm. then once you get into the flavor profiles, it's so super sweet. It just doesn't taste like stag at all. Yeah, it's very sweet. But it's really nice. Yeah, Richie Z, are you scheduling a big mash gathering in the next year or two? I would like to. Um, we'll see where the channel goes. Uh, um, it's it's been growing real fast. I'm almost at four thousand subs in less than a year, so I cannot complain. So we'll see where we're at in a year or so, and I would love to do a big meetup. So awesome! Yeah, that's pretty amazing. You like that four gate, huh? Isn't that good stuff? I do I was like, it's so desserty. I'm like, well, yeah. Every time I get that to somebody, they're just like, holy crap! It's so sugary sweet. It's so good. Yeah, it's quite good though. All right, so. Uh, um, are we up to my number two now? What's my number two, which was number six? All right. Oh, that is Springbank 15 year. Yes, I got the Springbank. I was, like, you, I was like, you nailed that. I was like, good job on Campbelltown. Yeah, that had to be a Campbelltown. That's really good. But yeah, this is great stuff. I have seen that in the store, and that is uh, that's stellar stuff. Mm. Glad you liked it because that was the ringer. That was for this session. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got that Campbelltown funk to it. Definitely that Springbank uh, flavor, but definitely probably one of the sweetest, one of the sweeter Springbanks I've had. Yes, for sure. Really good. Yeah, definitely. It just has that funky barley note in a Springbank. It's so good. Mm. Yeah, I love Springbank. That's one of the best distillers there is. Yeah, I know De Silva is a Springbank fanatic. <laughs> yeah he is man he's got he's got them all um oh, yeah. all right so uh let's go to your number one which uh, should be letter i so here we go did the, the drum roll yes this is blown brothers distilling old angle wow. notter bourbon which is a cast strength a 12 year old uh bourbon from blown brothers very cool now any idea with the mash? I know that's a it's sourced right from MGP. Is that where that one it's comes from? from? MGP. It's a high rye uh, distillate. Uh, that's why you're getting those piney notes that you totally called out spot on. Um, I, yeah, that, so interesting. I was like, that was by far the most complex, most interesting. I thought it's it's extremely complex. It changes over time. It's it's they are taking the cast from what I understand, and they they're aging it in whatever they're aging it in. Um, but I do, I do love the. I uh, so the 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 thing with Brown Brothers, what they're doing is they take the MGP bourbon and then I think they age it like through the winters, um, and so they get more of that, that uh, that you know that in and out of the barrel type aspect to it, and they it puts some kind of a, I don't know, it puts a very unique flavor profile in their bourbon. It's it's one of the most unique flavor profiles I've had. It's really it's really exceptional stuff. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, yeah and they, and they, make, and they make no. Bad. Yeah, they make no. Um, so this is also in Indiana, Blount Brothers. They're also in Indiana, and they make no bones about it that they source uh, with the name of it. Uh, yeah, so it's called Not Our Bourbon, which is kind right. of a fun way to say Not Our Bourbon. Yeah, uh, but whatever kind of alchemy they're doing, it's it's unbelievable stuff. What's the proof on that one? It says cat. What's what's the proof on that? This is 117.2. 17.2. Okay. Uh, Doug Kristoff just came in, got 100 watching. Yeah, we hit the 100 mark. Heck yeah. Thank you so much. I know I didn't get a super chat, but I'm going to hit the symbol anyway. <laughs> That's for 100 watching. Oh, 101 now. Awesome. <laughs> better. All right. So my number one, the one that's left, was bottle number three. What do we got? Glendronic 18-year alderance. Oh. So dark. It's it's all um, matured in Spanish Oloroso sherry. Dude, that is an it's, insane, insane, delicious scotch. I mean, look how dark that sucker is. I mean, I know it's like coffee. It is. I mean, it's. I mean, granted, oh, the sherry. I was a big influence, but this, this is, and plus, this has got older whiskey in it than the 
I guess what's on the shelves now is older, but the newer stuff won't be quite. They said it's old, so if you find a bottle, buy it. Yeah, Steve A. No, Steve A. This was number three in my tasting. That was uh, that was the bottle number three, but it was yeah, it was number yeah, it was in order number. It was in the order. It was number four. So right. yeah, you're right. Um, Ross's Law of Traps says, "Isn't Blonde Brothers from Illinois?" Yes, they are from Illinois. They are from uh, Galena or Galena. I don't know how you say it. Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah. That explains one of the ones I've had was called that by that city name. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I think I said Indiana, but yeah, yeah, Illinois. Yeah, everything I ever had from Blonde Brothers has been really good. I've never had a bad one from them. My goodness gracious, that I've never had. Uh, I and I'm a, a huge fan of Glendronic. I love the 12. I sip the 12 a lot, but to have the 18, um, the only one that they sell in Ohio is the 12. I can't find anything older. But next time I see that 18, man, I'm grabbing it. Holy yeah. crap. If, if you find a 21, it's even better. Oh, gee, don't tell me that, dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you some. Don't worry. How does it get better than that? My goodness. 21, yeah, because I've got the I've got a 15-year, and then also have a uh, a peated port wood of it as well. Yeah. Cool. I'll bring you, I'll bring you samples of the rest of them. That way you can try them all. Yeah, Steve A said there's a reason I asked if it was fruitcake in a glass because that's how I described the 18. Yeah, good call, Steve. You nailed it, man. Yep, absolutely. That's, that's definitely the correct answer. <laughs> Woo. Well, this was a hell of a tasting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Matt, I can't thank you enough for sending these. There's, I know there's some really amazing, some really pricey scotches in here, so I can't thank you enough for sharing. I know oh, you're, oh. I know you're a big sharer, and I, I can't say enough. Hey, thanks for sending me this stuff because I've never had any of these, so I'm really excited to try all these. So this is really great. And that was my goal. I can't believe that I actually sent you stuff that you've never had. <laughs> oh. That was that was my uh, that was my goal. I'm pretty excited about this, especially. Yeah, that's that's really cool. All right, so so before we give away this bottle tonight, um, I did tell I did tell Matt that one of the samples I did send him was a sample of this pick, and I actually wanted to get your impressions before we give it away to see what you think. Right. You could say it's horrible if you want, but I just want to want you to try it. It's letter E. Letter E. Yeah. So right. I want you to cleanse your palate a little bit and then take a sip of this. I want to kind of get your impressions of it. Um, and then, um, then what we'll do is we're going to go into the, uh, we're going to go into the giveaway and see who is walking away tonight with this, uh, Bardstown magic. Um, if you guys want, I'll, I'll sign the bottle for you before I send it if you want. And, um, yeah, should be pretty cool. I'm excited to give this away to, to one of you out there. Well, I'm going to try a six one. You should do number four. The you should do a number four then. Try number four. Try number four. All right. I'll do number four. Do six one. One. Let's do a six one too. All right, number four. Oh, I got number four. Here we go. I got to. Uh, what what one is least amount in it here? Ah, oh, hell, I'm just gonna shoot my first place. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's so good. All right, so let's see what we think of this. Oh God, that's so good. All right, I know we're going a little bit over here, but I don't care. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah. So, how many barrels did you did you go through to pick this one? They get a, uh, four choices. Okay. Wow. It's definitely alcohol forward on that. Yeah, you got to it's 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 bottled and bond. It's 100 proof, so it's not overly done. But you do on 1792s. The alcohol does punch through a little bit, but once it opens up, you'll start getting those some really nice flavors in there. I think. Yeah, yeah. Now, once you get the alcohol off, oh wow, that's yeah, super, super amounts of uh, butterscotch and toffee, vanilla, oat, caramel. And those first two notes that you picked out is the reason why we picked it. It's got an intense, it's got intense butterscotch toffee notes, which reminded of us of kind of an old dusty type bottle. So yeah, and even once you get past all that, yeah, you get some of that dusty corn in there too. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, you nailed it. dusty corn. Absolutely, dusty corn as you walk through an old barn. 
Scotch Comics saying, always a great show. Please keep it up. All right, we're going to go a little longer tonight. I know uh, I see uh, cast strength's not going on tonight. Uh, go, <laughs> Ethan said, go until Roy wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> we did that once. What was that? I know, that'd, be, that'd be amazing. About three or four months ago, I guess, what was that three or four weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, the, our first live stream that we just randomly did when you weren't on and uh, cast strength wasn't on. <laughs> People are demanding a live stream. Let's give them one. <laughs> This is an awesome nose on it. Isn't it a beautiful also got um like oil leather as well? Yep. This is really nice. Mm. Holy crap, number four. What was that finished in cotton candy barrels? It's pretty sweet. I really <laughs> it's super fruity. It is, it's like uh you ever open a fresh pack of juicy fruit gum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My like goodness, this is like cotton candy in a glass. Holy shit. Wow. All right, but now I'm getting a different on the very, very end. There's a there's a funky wood character going on. Mmm. It's almost like licorice. -y. Interesting. What the hell is that? Man. Yeah, that's a that's an 18 year as well. Is it? Mm-hmm. In fact, it's the 2017 Scotch of the Year from uh, Jim Murray. That's a crazy light for an 18 year. Yeah, it's, well, it's because it's no sherry cast finishing. Is it the Glen Alecky? It is the Glen Grant. Oh, Glen Grant. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I'm mixing them up with uh, with Ralphie. Mm -hmm. I wish we could get that Glen Alecky because I've never seen it here ever. This is the Glen. Oh, this is the Glen Grant. You yeah, said Glen Grant. Yeah. 18. yeah. So 18. their typical thing for their house is super fruity scotch. So yeah, that's pretty much you call it. Yeah, that is one of the fruitiest scotches I've ever tasted. It's like uh, it's like a bowl of fruity pebbles. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's just right? a pretty description on it. Because it's got the cereal malt mm -hmm. aspect to it. That's that cereal note to it. But then you add all that fruitiness, man. It is. This is if you guys like fruity pebbles, <laughs> go get some Glen Grant. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just a bowl of fruit. It's it's seriously it's fruity pebbles. Uh, who's winning here? Jason Coates says three to nothing blues. Nice. Holy shit! Wow. I'm, I'm rooting for the blues. We wouldn't want Boston to win any more things. They got they want enough damn things. Yeah, like and I'm sorry if you're from Boston, guys, but enough with your things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, you had your damn curse broken for the Red Sox. You, you had enough. <laughs> you stupid Patriots. I'm done with them. Oh, man. For, for you know, well over 20 years of the Cowboys sucking. It's it's terrible. All right. So since since I said fruity pebbles, I gotta ask you, man, and anybody in the chat, you could call us out too. What is your favorite cereal of all time? Favorite cereal of all time? It's got to probably still be Lucky Charms because Lucky Charms are awesome. <laughs> yes, Lucky Charms. Oh, man. I that would, that would, That's in my top three, but my number one cereal of all time is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, I love that one, too. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with that. I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, it's like it's funny. My mom would never buy us Lucky Charms. She's like, "Oh, it's a stupid commercial. You're, you're not gonna like it." Sure, as shit. We can try our friends. Oh, this is the greatest cereal ever. You lied to us, mom. This crap is great. Yeah, Lucky Charms, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, Captain. Oh, Captain Crunch is a good call out. Oh, I do like Captain Crunch. Oh, Corn Pops. That's a really good one by Moose Seventy Six. Mm -hmm. um, Apple. Oh, I forgot about Apple Jacks. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, I like uh, Golden Grams a lot. Those are good. I like all those uh, Quaker Oat Squares. Those are tasty. Donner Pasquis, he says, 22-year cast strength Glen Grant is like a honey crisp apple dumped in a pot of caramel. Sounds awesome. I've not had oh, that. That sounds freaking amazing. <laughs> that sounds really good, though. I've never even seen that one. Mm. No, your, your pick here is phenomenal. This is a fantastic pick. You like it? Isn't it good? I like it. That's really good. I, I have to pour more because it's so damn good. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. I really like it. Oh, it's so good. Pick is Matt approved. So, Absolutely, yeah, this is really rich. It is right. It's got it's got an incredible mouthfeel to it too. It's a super thick mouthfeel, but yeah, that butterscotch and toffee on the on the taste too. 
It's really strong. Yeah, it's an it's an on a Werther's. Do you do you see any correlation between this and any of the two older whiskeys that I sent you? As so, far as far as like a butterscotchy type note to it, maybe. Yeah, I would say probably the. Uh, let's see which one was it here. <laughs> Vito Vito Castring says I like Raisin Bran. <laughs> hey, that's a good one too. Oh man, Richie Z, call out a good one. Booberry was my second fave as a kid. Oh, I like. You know, I, never, I never see Booberry around until it's uh, until it's like oh. uh, until it's like Halloween time. They bring Frankenberry and Booberry back out. Well, the hell, a couple years ago they had out the uh, the Mummy as well. They came back from like the eighties, but yeah. it didn't do well. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of Frankenberry. I love Frankenberry too. That's a, yeah. I forgot about the berries, man. It's basically Lucky Charms, but just all one flavor. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> New Manium said great grains. That must be of the high fiber varietal. That's not one of my favorites. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you need like it's like Metamucil in a freaking cereal. Yeah, I guess. We. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve A said the only they only bring Booberry, Frankenberry, and Count Chocula out at Halloween. Yeah, yeah, and those three are uh, way up on the list. Yeah, absolutely, I agree, man. Yeah, Count Chocula, I love Count Chocula, one of my favorites of all time for sure. Yeah, Count Chocula is good. Uh, Cocoa Puffs, hell yeah, Cocoa Puffs. Puffs. Cocoa Pe Cocoa Pebbles though has like the best. Uh, Cocoa Pebbles and Fruity Pebbles have like the best milk. Uh, like the after milk, <laughs> I call it, you know? Yeah. If you, if you know the cereal, you get to drink the milk that's all, like, flavored by the cereal. Definitely. So good. <laughs> My kids refuse to drink it after that. They're like, it's it's got a weird color. I'm not drinking it. I'm like, why? That's the best part. Bourbon Professor said grape nuts. <laughs> oh, gosh. Those are horrible. You know what? I don't mind grape nuts as long as you cover it with sugar. <laughs> like Chew it on rocks. So if you've ever had grape nuts and you leave the bowl in the in the in the sink and you don't yeah. wash it right away, it ends up like barnacles on the bottom of the ship. Like you you have to chisel that off the freaking bowl. It's <laughs> terrible. I'm, I'm not surprised. That stuff is not good. My <laughs> <laughs> grandpa used to give it with freaking water, grape nuts and water. Oh, oh God. God. what are you in jail? That's terrible. No, he's like, well, he he was lactose intolerant. So he's like, here's it with some water. I'm like, it's so bad. <laughs> you can't drink it. I can't eat rocks, Grandpa. I'm sorry. Richie Z said frosted mini wheats for a while as an adult. You know, I could get down with frosted mini wheats. I kind of like those. I like the ones filled with the fruit inside of the, of the frosted mini wheats. Those are even oh, better. AD, ADH fishing's in the house. I got to see what he said. He's the, he's the comment king, I call ADH fishing. Uh, my mom made me eat grape nuts to make me miserable. Now I just eat grape nuts to pretend that's why I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, any. Apparently, grape nuts are just you know quintessential with miserable. Apparently, so. That's the way I always viewed them. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, so as you heard, uh, my 1792 bottle of pick is Matt approved whiskey oh, crusader yeah, approved. Damn good. Uh, so we're going to give this away right now. So as I mentioned, we had 73 entries. I'm sorry, 75 entries into uh, into the contest. Oh, much butter, Scott. Uh, what I did is I put the, all the names into random.org. So I'm going to share my screen, and I'll show you guys this. Um, do a screen share. Uh, here it is. Um, okay, share that. So here's random.org. Jesus. Oh, Matt's getting a call. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so all of your names that who entered are in this list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click randomize and then boom. Now we have our, uh, our numbers. So this is the numbers that you guys are at in the list. And basically what I'm going to do is ask uh, Google to pick a random number between one and oh, I'm sorry, 73, not 75. I couldn't read my own handwriting. Between one and seventy-three. So here is the list. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, I'm gonna go back to. Uh, so there's the list, guys. I just wanted to show you, and we're gonna come back now to the live, and I'm gonna say to Google here. 
Pick a number between 1 and 73. And the random number is 59. So let's go uh, to the list. And 59 is... Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screen share this for you guys. You can see that I'm not lying, so you can see who it is. Give me one second. Let me go back to the screen share. Uh, application window. Uh, here we go. 59 on the list is Cap'n Make It Happen. <laughs> Holy crap. John, that's awesome. Cap'n Make It Happen. John wins the pick. Congrats. I hope he's still in the chat. I hope he's not still working out at the gym. But Cap'n Make It Happen, congratulations. You just won your own bottle of Bardstown Magic. Hell yeah. He's going to be damn happy, but that's an awesome pick. Yes. Cap'n, is he, I hope he's still in here, man. I don't know. Sometimes he teeters out. Let me see. If, I hope he's still in here. Oh, he is. He's in it. He All just right. went, oh, and then he cursed. <laughs> Congratulations, John. And uh, I know John is, uh, you know, he's gone through a little bit of a rough patch. No a doubt. A little bit of a rough time, a uh, very rough time. So uh, I am actually really happy that he won this because uh, I'm glad to give this to him. So, uh, Cap'n, um, Cap'n, do you want me to sign the bottle for you? I'll happily sign the bottle and, uh, and send it out to you um, if you want me to. But congratulations, Cap'n. Thanks for entering. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for being a supporter. Uh, thanks for being a patron. Uh, I can't say enough. Thank you so much, Cap'n. I really appreciate it. And this bottle is for you, and I can't wait for you to, uh, to get it and to try it so I can hear your thoughts, buddy. Congrats, Cap'n. Everybody raise your glass for Cap'n uh, for, uh, for winning tonight. And uh, take a sip for him, for John. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Brandon Weiss says, game over. St. Louis, four to nothing. Uh, Captain says, uh, that's amazing. Sign it. Whiskey Crusaders, I'm bringing it over next get-together. <laughs> it's next Friday. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this out to you tomorrow, uh, Captain. So you, you should have it pretty quick. Um, yeah, but thanks so much. That's awesome. Uh, so is it actually – so you guys could tell me, is the game actually over or is he just saying it's over because it's 4 nothing, or is the game actually over right now? Is St. Louis the the, uh, the, uh, the champions right now? It's apparently a surprise. Third period, okay. Is it still third period? Okay. So if there's four minutes left is what it's saying. Okay. So four yeah. minutes left. Four minutes. Yeah, Chris, Chris from Berman saying saying four minutes left. All right. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty much over. Yeah. Uh, Steve A says there are more people watching this uh, in Arena Stadium in St. Louis than in Boston. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So uh, before we sign off here, uh, I, again, I want to thank uh, – I'm going to kind of go through here. If you guys want to order one of my brand-new coins um, for you, I, like I said, I don't have a store yet, so um, if you're interested, you can um, uh, you can actually, if you want, uh, comment in the chat, or I'm sorry, comment at the end of the video. Once this video posts and you want to order one, uh, go down in the comment section and just you know let me know that you want to order a coin. Uh, some specific numbers have been uh, spoken for already, but if the number that you want I have, I will definitely get it for you if I have it. I have 150 for the first uh, grouping. Um, also, if you also want a coin, you can reach me out on Instagram. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter uh, if you guys are on uh, that social media. Um, I'll connect with you. Uh, I'll probably be doing payment through PayPal. They're going to just be 10 bucks, like all the other ones are. And I'll, I'll start sending them out as soon as I can. So um, that'll be awesome. Let me know. And I will start getting out these coins for you guys. I'm really excited about these. Here's another look at them for those of you that missed them. Um, really cool looking coin. This is my new tasting coin. Mash and drum. Then on the back, it has a little bit of an overhead view of a snare drum with the crossed uh, drumsticks. And like I said, this is going to be uh, for kit number one. There's going to be five coins for uh, for each drum kit. So each drum kit will have uh, a different coin. Um, I'm sorry, a different kind of look and aspect to it. And then you're going to need five coins to complete the complete drum kit. So, so we're going to go from there. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this live stream. Uh, Matt, Whiskey Crusaders, tell everybody where to find you, buddy. 
Well, obviously on YouTube at Whiskey Crusaders. Uh, we also have Instagram and Facebook as well. So you can check us out on there. And then if you want to email us, it's whiskeycrusaders3 at gmail.com. If you want to send us an email, have any questions or whatever. And we're willing to review just about anything. So whatever <laughs> you guys want to let us know what you want us to review. And we have a huge collection to pick from. So we'll, we'll review just about anything. So we're not afraid. Yeah. And um, as you can see, I was actually able to send him stuff he's never tasted. So there's stuff that he'll, he, he's, he could taste. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys haven't yet, please, please go subscribe to Whiskey Crusaders. Go check them out. They have, he, you know, Matt has an amazing whiskey collection, probably a lot of stuff that you want to know and hear about. Um, also, before we sign off, I want to call out, uh, you guys know uh, Dan the Man Trout, uh, Dusty Dan uh, is now his, his new name. <laughs> so Dusty Dan Whiskey Reviews, he is starting up his own review channel, his own uh, review channel. He's going to be doing a mix, mostly some new stuff, but every, I think, I think he said about once a month, He'll be adding in a uh, an old bottle. He's got some really cool. I mean, that old uh, granddad that I pulled out was from like '82. He's got stuff way older than that. So um, he'll be kind of filtering those into his streams. Um, uh, he's going to be starting doing some streams soon, some uh, some videos. So go check out Dusty Dan. Give him a give him a follow. He's also on Instagram. I uh, just want to call out my buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, and with that. Uh, I am Jason C. from the Master and Drum. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We went a little bit over an hour and a half. I'm glad you hung out with us. This was an awesome time tonight. Congrats again to Cap and Make It Happen. If you want a coin, reach out to me, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, leave a comment after the video is posted. And like I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with, as you can see tonight. Uh, cheers, Matt, and uh, we'll see you cheers. soon, buddy. All right, thanks. Cheers. Everybody.